Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, welcome back to What The Math, and this is part 7 of creating a space game from scratch using Stencil, and in this video we're going to focus on creating a simple artificial intelligence, or also known as AI, for our enemy, which is right uh, here, enemy number 1. So in the previous video I showed you that it was just kind of standing there, sitting there, just looking at us, but this time we're going to make it move and possibly even chase us around, so there's going to be two different types of AIs we're going to create, and let's start with actually going to the scene here. I'm going to just place one of the enemies, I'm going to erase the other guys, and I'm going to take this guy, put him right here. Oh, by the way, if you didn't know, you can actually resize things by just doing this, but we're not going to do that yet, because we don't really need to do that. So he's going to stand right there. Now, first thing we can do with this particular enemy is... We can give it a, a really, really simple event that will make it move left and right and possibly up and down using one of the um, timed events. So like, for example, if I were to add every n second event, it will repeat doing this every, let's just say, I don't know, four seconds or let's just say maybe eight seconds. So what will we do? Well, it's going to move somewhere, right? Since I placed it on top, since it's actually right here on top, let's just say we wanted to move left and right just repeatedly. It's going to be a super simple AI, uh, it's just going to basically move left and right. To do this, we're going to tell it to move left for a few seconds, and then move right for a few seconds, and then move left and move right. You can obviously make this a little bit more complex, you can assign different patterns to it. It's up to you to sort of experiment. I'm just going to do left and right for now just to show you how it's done. Uh, to do this, well, first of all, let's go into actor motion and give it speed uh, on x-axis of, let's just say, minus 5. And then, this is why I wrote after here, after some time, it's going to go the other way. It's going to go the opposite way. And this time it's going to have speed of 5. Now, after how long though? So, if every 8 seconds is going to do this, then think of it as like what is it going to do for the other half of the time so after four seconds it should do the opposite so in essentially what i just created is a very very simple loop where it's going to go left and right changing every four seconds let's just test this let's see how this works okay so it actually took it a while to start moving i don't know why it took so long but i think um, okay, so it is moving, it's definitely moving, but it actually took it about four seconds to start. So I'm wondering, maybe, it's, yeah, okay, it's because it's waiting for eight seconds. I think it's, in the beginning, it's waiting for eight seconds before it starts moving. So that kind of, I guess, works. The only problem is that I actually wanted to start moving right away. So can we actually make it move right away? And I guess one of the easiest ways of doing that, so that, you know, that basically it starts moving as soon as it's created, is to add a when creating event. And here, what you can do is when you're created, uh, where is it going to move again? It's going to move to minus 5. So when you're created, you're going to start moving to plus 5 right away. And then after that, obviously, you're going to start changing your motion. So let's see if this really, really simple AI works now. And there we go, it's moving right away. So, this is obviously something you can do if you're creating something like, oh look, it's stuck in the planet. Uh, if you're doing something like Space Invaders, for example, you can have like a nan ring that moves left and right and you're trying to shoot it down but you're missing. Hey, I hit it, yay. Uh, so that's that's probably one of the most simplest um, AIs you can make. But let's make something a little bit more complex. Let's make something that basically, um, an AI that actually chases you around that tries to catch you. And it, it, it sounds it sounds like it's a pretty simple AI, but it's actually a little bit more mathematical when it comes to making it. So I'm going to do a bit of a rehash of uh, trigonometry. If you haven't done trigonometry yet, don't worry, it's not going to be too hard. But if you remember trigonometry, remember tangents, remember those uh, sines, cosines, and tangents, and then tangent was basically the ratio of opposite side divided by adjacent side. Well, we're going to be using this in a second, but we actually need to know the opposite of tangent, also known as inverse tangent. In uh, programming, it's known as arctan, and uh, so here we're going to go with... Now, arctan2 uh, refers to something that uh, a lot of different programming languages often use. This is sort of a picture that tries to explain it, but I guess it's a little bit too difficult if you don't know what it's talking about. But essentially, so there's a triangle right here in the middle, and we have two coordinates for this side and this side. And the arc, uh, or a ten two, what it does is it's telling you the direction of where this line is pointing. 
So basically, a, a tan 2 refers to the direction of something. And we'll need this because we want the enemy that's going to chase us around to know the direction where we are, right? Now, let's actually just erase uh, these simple AIs that we just made. And we may, can, we may actually come back to them later because it, it's cool to combine different AIs, but we're going to create a new type of event. And this is going to be just a, a always event, one updating event. And what we want to create here is this. We want to, uh, it's actually right here. It's the velocity event. Now we want to set velocity to our, um, our enemy toward us in our direction. Uh, there's many different ways of doing this. I think one of the easier ways is either using push, which is basically literally just pushes the actors toward you, or you can also just use this, set velocity in degrees, and then you can give it a speed as well. So, so far it's pretty simple. You're setting velocity, let's just say speed of, well, we want it to be a little bit slower than us, so let's just say four, but this is where it gets difficult. So what do you do for, for degrees? Now, what do you actually put in here? How do you put the location of our own actor? And this is where we are going to start using something called variables. Now, in programming, um, or especially in, in Stencil, these are called attributes. These are essentially, um, if you ever did algebra, these are your X's and Y's. These are essentially letters and sort of like names that can be represented as numbers. So remember, the idea of a function f of x, so essentially an attribute is this x, and we're going to be defining this function using a code in Stencil. So this is essentially literally a, a very practical application of algebra that you learn in like grade 8, grade 9, uh, that many times students are like, so when am I going to use this in real life? Well, right now, you're going to be using it right now, uh, because you literally are going to be creating a function that will then tell your enemy where to go. So for this function, we actually need to go back to our main actor, our spacecraft, and create new two new attributes, two new essentially uh, variables. And I'm going to just do another updating always event that is going to do this. We're going to go to attributes, and these are going to be, I think these are going to be Actually, let's just do game attributes. Game attributes means it applies to the entire game, whereas this attribute only applies to a specific um, specific actor. So game attribute. So this is a game function, and we're going to call them x location, or I guess x coordinate and y coordinate. What this, what this is going to do is it's going to tell our game uh, where we are currently located. So for example, if I'm right here, it's going to say, well, right now you are at X 188, Y 167. This is where I'm reading this from. Um, if I'm right here, it's going to say X 286, Y 216. X 267, X 219, and so on. So this is essentially telling uh, the game that your game attribute for your X and Y location is this. How do we do this? Well, it's super, super easy. I'm going to create a new game attribute. We're going to name it, I uh, just say X position. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you name it. And it's going to be a number attribute because it's going to be an actual number. Uh, and that's going to be number one. And number two is going to be Y position. Now, it's kind of very important to name them properly, once again, so you don't forget what they are and what they do. But uh, if you don't name them, if you know what you're doing, that's fine as well. Now, go to setters. And here we're going to say, uh, say so your X position, what is my, my X, oh, actually, and also Y position. What is my X position? Well, for um, for every, every time I move, it's going to change, right? And how do we do that? Well, you go into actor's position and you say, well, can you set my new attribute called X position to where I currently am, to my X of actor, X of self? And the same for, for Y, y, of, y position. So what this di just did is essentially, it, it's telling the game that every time I move these X's and Y's, these, these inputs, they're going to be changing, and obviously it's going to change the actual function. So that's essentially what we just did. And it's pretty simple. It's basically the math applic uh, applicable to programming. And now we're going to do a little bit of more math with trigonometry. So we're going to go back into our enemy. And so right now, if I just tell it that, you know, I'm with my, uh, go to my X direction, go to my Y direction, it's going to go in a completely different direction. We actually have to do something a little bit more complex and use a trigonometric function, which I believe is under numbers here somewhere, trig exponents, or there you go. Um, okay, so we're looking for a trig function, and this is what we're actually looking for. It's called a tan 2. 
So like I said, a tan 2 is the inverse tangent, and 2 refers to the fact that there's actually two different position, uh, two different um, coordinates. In this case, it's y and x. Now, if I actually just say, okay, can you go to my, uh, where's my game attributes? Can you please go to my x position, and can you please go to my y position at speed 4? It's probably not going to go in the right direction. I'm going to tell you in a second why not, because if I just start this right now, this is what's going to happen. It's actually moving somewhere completely different. And this is, uh, it's basically because the way that the directions are calculated in this game is a little bit different. Now, what you need to do is this. It's actually another little mathematical function that we're going to do. We're going to take this out for now and put a math function with a minus in here. There's going to be two minus functions. This one is going to be y position minus minus uh, y of self. So what exactly am I doing here? And this is obviously going to be x position minus x of self. So what these two things are telling the game is that where you're going to go is not toward the y value of the actor, but what you're actually going to do is you're going to take the value of where um, where the actor is and minus it from where you are. You're going to actually find this length. Because right now what it's doing is it's actually using a completely different value. It's using basically like if your actor is right here, it's telling it that the length of x is 287, the length of y is 213. But the actual length is much shorter. It's actually this minus this. So there's actually like a triangle that you're going to be forming. It's a little easier to see it if it's this way. There's actually a triangle that's formed between these, these three points. This is why I'm changing it from just y position to y position minus y of self and x position minus x of self. And now if I test this game, it should actually follow me. Or actually, wait, I totally forgot to do something. I totally forgot to change things to degrees. Right now it's uh, reading things in radians, which is another mathematical concept uh, related to circles. Um, in this game, things should be in degrees because this says degrees. So my calculation of a tan has to be in degrees. Um, a tans, like all other uh, trigonometric functions, are usually calculated in radians. Radian refers to this length right here. It's also defined as 57.3 degrees. Uh, essentially, it, it is related to kind of the idea of pi as well. Um, but anyway, this is sort of beyond the scope of this, this video. What we want to do is we want to change the radians, which it sort of calculates right now, into degrees. And this is, once again, all kinds of mathematical stuff is under numbers and text. And if you don't really know where to find it, just type degrees, and it should give you this. There you go. We want to put everything into this, and it will essentially convert my radians. Oh, no, don't, don't come out. Uh, it will convert my radians into into degrees. You can actually do degrees or radians. It actually has the option here. But now as soon as I actually take this box, which is kind of hard to handle, and put this inside here. Now, okay, so what this is doing is this. First of all, it's converting, uh, it's finding the triangular values. It's converting those values into arctangent, arctangent, which is the inverse tangent of the angle of that triangle. It's then converting that into degrees, and it's looking for the value of the angle between my spacecraft and the alien. And then it's feeding that back to the alien and telling it, okay, so follow that angle, follow this angle. If I'm here, it's gonna say follow that angle. Uh, and every time it changes, uh, or my directions change, every time my x and y, y value change, it will tell uh, the alien to change its angle. And uh, basically this will make it follow me at, at the speed of four. So now I think I didn't really make any more mistakes. This was a really good sort of troubleshooting uh, opportunity for me just to show you if you make a mistake there's always something missing and now we should have an alien that follows us around to create a kind of a fun mini game and here we go every time I move away oh no it's really fast every time I move away it's going to follow me around and you can totally actually have this oh geez it and see it killed me that's actually a pretty hard game um, so you can totally have this as a mini game you can have a bunch of aliens that are going to be coming from every side and you basically have to just shoot them down and run away from them and basically not die. Let's see if I can survive this. No, oh no, I died, okay. So so that's essentially the initial uh, steps of our 
cool, awesome, super game that's going to suck so bad. But uh, that's essentially what I wanted to teach you. I wanted to show you how to add AI to your uh, enemies, and we've just successfully added two different types of AIs. I kind of think I'm going to leave this, but possibly decrease the speed to maybe, I don't know, two. I think two is a little bit more fair. And possibly also increase my own speed, because I think I'm moving a little bit too slow. Uh, but uh, today you've learned, hopefully learned about attributes, how attributes work. You've also ho hopefully learned uh, the idea of trigonometric functions and how they apply to game making and, you know, the idea of uh, tangents and degrees and radians. If you don't remember that stuff or if you don't actually know that stuff, uh, please leave a comment. I can maybe make another video explaining how all of this actually works because I know this is probably one of the more complex um, code lines you've seen so far. But uh, all in all, that's essentially how all of this works. And I think we're sort of making good progress here. The game is already literally a game you can actually have you know you already have a goal and actually this is what really defines a game it has to have a goal which is i guess kill the enemies and survive yourself there should be some sort of failure which is when you die and obviously a winning component is when you don't die and you kill everything uh so yes the game is uh progressing good so far in the next video we're going to take this a little bit further and start creating new Things like um, another enemy with maybe three hit points and we're going to have a hit point bar as well and possibly also make a completely new scene. So we're going to have maybe another scene here, another scene here and here and here and like portals that you can go through to reach a new solar system or something like that. Because it's a space game, we have to be able to travel in space, right? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this so far and I hope you're learning from this. And please leave a comment, let me know if there's something else you want to learn, and if there's something specific you want me to show you as well. Hopefully by the next few videos we'll be able to actually come up with a workable example of this game. I'm also possibly going to post this somewhere so you can actually play it once it's actually, you know, good enough. And uh, see how it goes from there. Thank you for watching, I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye-bye.